Today we are going to practice subtracting fractions with common denominators. So go ahead and cut it out and glue it on the next page. Okay, last time we talked about adding fractions and we learned that all you have to do is add the numerators and keep the denominator the same. So this is exactly how subtracting fractions work. Here we have a math sentence, 3 fourths minus 1 fourth equals something. And we also have a model that represents that. So here's our model that represents 3 fourths. Three out of the four parts are shaded. Now we are gonna subtract one of those 3 fourths. So this X represents taking it away. So if we take it away, we're left with these two, which is shown right here in the difference. Now remember, the difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So here we have two out of four. So three minus one is two, but your denominator stays the same because the denominator always represents the number of parts in one of the holes. Now look right here, we have two fourths, and it says simplify the difference. Is two fourths the same as one half? We can just look at it and tell that two fourths is the same as a half. So simplify just means to write it with smaller numbers in a way that still represents the same amount. All right, so remember when we subtract fractions, we subtract the numerators, but the denominators stay the same. We can also use a number line to help us subtract fractions. So here we have a number line and we have a number sentence of 4 sixths minus 2 sixths. So this number line has broken into six equal parts and labeled with each of the parts. So we're going to start at 4 sixths. So right here is where we start. Now since we're going to take away 2 sixths, we have to hop backwards two times. Wherever we land is our difference. So our difference is going to be two sixths. Now if we were to look at this, we can see that four minus two is two and the denominator stays the same. So whether you have a model or not, you can still do math the same way. It says to subtract on a number line, find your starting point and move backwards, and that's exactly what we did. Here are a set of practice problems. We have 3 eighths minus 1 eighth. So let's say 3 minus 1 is 2, and the denominator doesn't change. Now let's look at this one. 2 minus 1 is 1, and the denominator stays the same. 4 minus 3 is 1, and the denominator stays the same. 3 minus 2 is 1, and the denominator stays the same. 7 minus 4 is 3, and the denominator stays the same. Now I want you to do the last ones on your own just for a little bit of extra practice, but before we go, let's talk about this question that was on the side of the notes. It says, think about it. Why does the denominator stay the same? That's a great question. The denominator stays the same because the number of parts in the whole doesn't change. Whether you're adding on to fourths or taking away from fourths, it doesn't really matter because it's still gonna be fourths. If you were to add these together or subtract them, then you would have a denominator that's totally different. So in this case, if we were to subtract the numerators two, we would get a zero. And remember, the denominator represents the number of parts in one whole. If there's a zero here, how can we have zero parts in one whole? We can't. I hope that helps you remember how important it is that when you're adding fractions or subtracting fractions, the denominator doesn't change. I'll see you next time.